mailbag time. I've got a bunch of stuff in here. I've got some Elma 14 stuff, it seems too. I don't know what this is. Can't tell. Now I've got this package here. I can't tell what's in it yet, obviously. I um, wonder what it is. I don't know. I think we'll have to open it and find out. It's two belts. One of these is a 91 inch, the other one's a 92 inch A type drive belt. My lawnmower the other day I was cutting the grass and the belt broke. The drive belt broke, so the thing got stranded. So my wife had to help me push it around so I could replace the belt. And the belt I had is actually slightly too long. That's why I still had the belt because it didn't actually fit properly. It's enough to make it move, but it tended to slip and it wasn't very good. So I've got two new drive belts. Let me know down below in the comments if you want to see me replace a drive belt on the lawnmower. Because I've done some mechanical kind of automotive type videos before, and sometimes I've done it right, sometimes it's been a real disaster, I suppose, as far as YouTube content goes. So I'm sort of on the fence about whether or not I should even do a video about it. I think I'll record it anyway, and I'll let you guys decide in the comments whether or not I should bother publishing the video. I mean, it's going to take me probably an hour to replace the belt, probably an hour to replace the belt. It's a bit awkward and fiddly. But I thought I might just do a video on it. It's an old mower, it looks like crap, but you know, it's, yeah. So, give me comments down below if you think I should do a video on replacing the belt on that lawnmower. It is a bit involved, and I don't have much of you out to see, actually, either, but well, tell me down below if you think I should do it or not. Alright, Emmett 14 package. Two axial capacitors. So these are capacitors which I purchased when you finished fixing this thing here. So this has got some caps in it which needs replacing. Now I don't know if these are the right ones or not. I might have just bought some because I thought I wanted them. I'm not sure. Uh, these are 0.47s are they? It's a PET capacitor. Yeah, 0.47 microfarad 250 volt. These are PET capacitors. I bought a few different ones. I wasn't quite sure which one I was going to use. So these are needed to replace original old paper capacitors which are inside that thing. If there's paper caps you want to get rid of them. Yeah, they should be enough. I don't remember exactly which part's going to replace those, but yeah, some like Well, nice letting me down. It's a little mini grabber tool. So you're either using squeeze the end it grabs these you have grabbing screws out of deep holes and stuff like that. Not quite sure why it's pulling apart, but uh, anyway. Yeah, so I thought it could be handy. It's cheap, it was on AliExpress, it's cheap. It took a while to get it though, I think I ordered this about three months ago. If you drop screws in places which are really inaccessible sometimes, or maybe you can even use this to help get a screw on, you can, you can barely reach to get it on. Maybe you can use this to grab the screw head. Because it's four prongs, not three, so it can actually bounce the screw out. You can get use that to get it started, and you can get a screwdriver in, that kind of thing. Sometimes you need these kinds of little tools. Another element 14 package. Is it a capacitor? Is it something else? Yep, here's the capacitors. Oh, I've got a note on my invoice. Some items are temporarily out of stock. Hold on a second. Oh, wow. That's a lot of stuff that's out of stock. That's concerning. So these are 0.1 microfarad, 630 volt. All the 10, we've got 10, so that's good. But you should see the invoice of these things which are out of stock. Let me just fold this over. Yeah, have items that aren't in stock right now. That's a problem, isn't it? So again, these capacitors are needed to replace paper caps in this... Valve equipment I've got sitting over here. Might as well the last one, eh? Get this one out of the way, then we'll move on to something else. I think it's Midland 14 too. And these are 0 0.047 630 volt film. Same deal. Valve stuff. Right. This is more than my 14 stuff. 
Oh, okay. Got some big resistance. 20k. 10k. 20k, 5% 3 watt, which is the same as these. Same part number. Interesting, different packaging in the same package. But I needed this sort of size resistor to replace one of the ones in that Heathkit piece of gear sitting over here. It's got a 22 ohm resistor in there, which I already replaced with a 1 watt, I think it was, or maybe a 2 watt resistor part. And I know it's getting too hot for my liking, so I decided to buy some 3 watt resistors instead and put them in. And then the next resistor next to it was also a 10k. So I bought some 10k ones as well, because that is also looking like it's getting pretty hot, so I thought I'd get something in too. This bag might be a package of multiple packages. Let's find out. I can fill lots of things in there. It's a bag of bags. Yep, two things in it, so this will do. We'll add these on. Bonus mail bag. So this is Solderwick. Gootwick. So it's two millimetres wide, 30 metres on the roll. 30 metres a wick. That should last me a while. So that's awesome. Because I've got these other little rolls of wick which I've been using, these ones I've got from AliExpress and there's not actually much on these holders. There's like one and a half metres or so like that. <laughs> not much at all. And all of them I've been getting used and they're all, apart from this one, almost out. There's not much left on this one either. So I thought I'd get some more. So when I do run out, I've got a new one. And I decided to go to like a 2 mil size, which is the same size as this one. I thought that's quite a nice size to use, so I've got a bunch of that one. Okay, a bunch of IEC power cables. I was getting really low on these things. I realised that when I'm trying to do these repairs on bits of gear, I use these kinds of cables a lot. Even once I've repaired the gear and I actually need to use it, I need these cables to plug them in, obviously. And to buy them locally, they're relatively expensive. But from China, they're only a few dollars. So, I thought I'd get some from China. Quality, who really knows how good these are? I might have to do some testing on them to make sure they look okay, but... On the surface, they seem alright. They've got the insulated pins on here. IEC plug. It's rated at 10 amps. Plug says 10 amps. The cable says 3 by 0.75 mil, 300 volt rated. Feels quite flexible as though there's pretty thin wires in it. But the things I'd use these on would be low power anyway. It's not like I'm going to be trying to, you know, run a 10 amp device through these things. I'd only be using them for things only, you know, one or two amps. So even if these aren't really what they say they are, um, they're probably fine. Now the thing is. All the times I need to cut the plugs off, like I don't actually want the IEC plug on it, I just want the lead with this plug on it. And because these are cheap, I wouldn't actually mind cutting that plug off and just using this lead. When I do go to do that, I'll be able to check the wire quality out. I'm not going to destroy one now for the sake of it, but when I do get a project where I need to put a plug on, I can cut one of these off and check the wire quality out in the process and see how good these actually are. So that's something I'll be doing in the future. So if you like my bag video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, there's a playlist over here that I think you should watch the playlist here. YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a subscribe link right here to click on that if you haven't already subscribed despite me nagging you. And there's a Patreon support link if you feel like supporting the channel. There's also a thanks button down there too if you want to click on that to do a one-time donation. Bye.